Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Agian and these are some of the top stories we have for you tonight. The feds make a bust off the coast of St. Thomas. A St. Croix teacher says enough is enough. And another visit with world-class choreographer Alex Simon. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. <laughs> Top story tonight, U.S. Customs officers have made a bust off the coast of St. Thomas during a routine patrol off the coast of St. Thomas on Tuesday night. Customs and Border Protection Marine agents stopped a vessel they encountered not using its navigational lights. On board the vessel was one individual who claimed to be a U.S. citizen. As the subject searched for his identification documents in his luggage, a small bag of what appeared to be drugs dropped and prompted agents to board the vessel for a search. The search resulted in the discovery of 17,600 in U.S. currency and three small bags of cocaine. And in other news tonight, a St. Croix teachers are not happy these days, and it's all about collective bargaining. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. Thanks a lot, Jerome. I have to tell you, perhaps it started in Egypt and then Wisconsin, and um, it has finally filtered down to the Virgin Islands. WAPA employees, not happy. Bills just coming in and out with the LEOC. Teachers, not happy. Unkept promises. Um, the AFT, I was contacted by Roberto James as they um, did the deal at legislature yesterday. And y'all picketed and did your thing at 11, uh, at 4.30 in the afternoon. Now you're out here, you did it for lunchtime. Looks like it's a one-man show. Like, you, you know, you're the only upset teacher, but I do realize your fellow teachers have had to go in because when they miss and they un end up on the clock and they're doing a job action like this, then, of course, they can get scrutinized. Roberto, let's, let's nail it down in about two or three minutes. Why are you unhappy? Listen, thank you for coming. And as you noted, our membership really are dedicated to the students. That's why they had to go back in. Our way of life as we know it is about to be destroyed. It's being threatened. Collective bargaining has provided a way for the, mid for the middle class. The middle class is under attack. Right now, Wes, if we do not stand up, if the community do not get up in arm about this issue, this is not an AFT issue. This is the community issue. And if we do not stand up, our way of life is threatened. We have all grown. We have all bet ourselves because we've all gone to school according to the requirements. We've had to have good evaluations. We must have certifications. We must meet those qualifications set by the department. And when we meet those qualifications, we bring them to the table and we help our students. But when the government negotiated in bad faith, we didn't realize that that's what we were dealing with. But here it is. It's come to pass now that they're getting ready to destroy all of us. What does this mean? Vote no. Vote no. 29-0045. This is the measurement that's being proposed, that was proposed by the governor and has been taken up by this legislature. If we do not allow these legislators to hear our voice, we cannot trust them. We have learned that we cannot trust them. And this measure, they're going to use it to eliminate the middle class. This is the same thing that's going on in Wisconsin, isn't it? That the, the governor wanted to stop collective bargaining with the union's involvement. Same thing with here. Is that what you're looking at? Listen, Wes, a lot of people in the past know about the merit system. They know how it's been abused in the past. The what? The merit system. Uh -huh. We cannot count on the merit system. Collective bargaining gives us all a level playing field. Why do you think that the governor wants to get rid of collective bargaining? Because then he could dictate salaries. He can manipulate what we are about to make. Those of us through collective bargaining over the years, every year we get an increment based on our performance. Every year that increment has been earned. But now without collective bargaining, we will not get those adjustments. Even if qualifications are improved, we will not get no kind of adjustment. Now, Wes, this is this is just so the governor and the senators can maintain their way of life. They're going to do it on the backs of the working men and women. And when we stay quiet, we're actually promoting it. 
the masses are quiet for reasons. Some people are apprehensive. Some people are scared to lose their jobs. But the sacrifices that have been made in the past has been made for the collective bargaining members to continue to stand and produce for this community. If we don't have collective bargaining, the governor would have the wherewithal to reduce our salaries and it could go as low as $20,000. I brought this minimum salary for government employees so that you can see it. Without collective bargaining, without collective bargaining, the governor can reduce this salary, notwithstanding any other law. He can reduce salaries as low as $20,000. So everything we have worked for right now is under threat. And it's not just the AFT, it's the entire community, the legislative branch, the judicial branch, even the private sector. Mm -hmm. When this law is enacted, the employers of the private sector can use it to also dwindle the salaries of their employees. All right, well, what's going to be the next step? Because we have to wrap this up. We are organizing. We're going to come up with a plan. Having a plan is the essential key to this whole thing. All right. And when we collectively get together and come up with a plan, we will send that message. The senators feel they're untouchable, and we will let them know that we will get to them one way or the next. As we wrap this up, it was the headline story out of Chicago yesterday. Thousands of teachers facing losing their jobs in the Midwest. You've already seen what happened in Wisconsin. It's on the East Coast and Pennsylvania, also Ohio, New Jersey, and New York. Thousands and thousands of school teachers losing their jobs and a lot of programs and classes are going as well. A lot of government programs are starting to go. What are we gonna do to get out of this hole? I don't know. It started in Egypt. Perhaps it'll end at legislature in Frederickstead. At John H. Woodson, one man stands alone, but he carries a lot of weight. He has the entire world on his shoulders. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. And two men have been arrested for burglarizing a Peterborg home on St. Thomas. Recovered items include Pokemon to porn. Let's go to Police Chief Rodney Carrad. Good day. This is Rodney F. Carrad, Senior Police Chief for the St. Thomas St. John District. On March 27, 2011, police in St. Thomas arrested 37-year-old Haiti native Robster Richard of Hospital Ground and 24-year-old Dominican Republic native Juan Gonzalez of Murphy Gata and charged them with two counts of burglary third degree and two counts of possession of stolen property after investigation revealed that they had burglarized a Peterborg home shortly before being stopped on the Megan's Bay Estate Road. This investigation was initiated due to a call from a concerned citizen who observed suspicious activity while traversing the main Peterborg Road that same day. Due to the suspicious actions of the two occupants of a white 2001 Mitsubishi Mirage, license plate number was also given at the time, and being that numerous burglaries had occurred in the Peterborg area over the past months, the concerned individual immediately notified a second person of the suspicious vehicle and occupants, who in turn notified myself. I notified the officers who were assigned to that area of the situation and had them conduct an inspection for the vehicle in question. The vehicle was found traveling south on the Megan's Bay Road, away from the area. The occupants, upon observing that the police officers were initiating a stop, opened their doors while the vehicle was still moving, possibly as if considering fleeing. The officers initiated a stop successfully and observed items including computers and other items in pillowcases in the vehicle. Both individuals denied ownership of the items being in the car. They were detained for investigatory purposes and were transported back to the Criminal Investigation Bureau where they were advised of their constitutional rights. Both of the males waived their rights and gave statements to investigators. Based on the investigation and based on the owners of the residents finding that their home was burglarized and positively identifying the items found in the Mitsubishi Mirage as a stolen property from their home, both individuals were arrested and charged as stated above. Today is a good day. When the results of a simple pass on of information of suspicious activity leads to an arrest like this makes one feel that progress was made towards not only us continuing to gain the trust of the community we serve but also the gratitude of taking burglars terrorizing our community off of the street i commend the concerned citizen who did an excellent job in passing on the necessary information leading to these successful arrests i also want to commend the officers assigned to marl c noon command who did an initial stop for the diligence the detectives who worked the investigation for their great investigatory skills, and the supervisors of these officers and detectives for their guidance to their assigned officers and detectives. We, the members of the Virgin Islands Police Department, along with you, our neighbors, family, friends, and fellow Virgin Islanders, working together, 
can make a difference for the betterment of all. And we want to thank Police Chief Rodney Krog for those words tonight. And now it's Wednesday. Time to check in with Judy Fricks. She's got your weekly Crime Stoppers report. This is Judy Fricks with your weekly Crime Stoppers report. We are asking for your help to solve the following crimes. If you know something, say something. Your assistance is helping law enforcement. On St. Croix, many citizens, particularly seniors, are being taken by scam artists. Unscrupulous stockbrokers, salespeople. Folks, there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you suspect that it's too good to be true, it probably is. Get a second opinion from your accountant, from your attorney, from your clergy, anyone who can help you find out if it's a real deal. This white collar crime may be nonviolent, but that's no consolation to people who lose their homes or go hungry. If you know of any scam artists, please call Crime Stoppers, tell us what you know. And on St. John, Deputy Chief Boy is asking for your assistance to help identify people who may be selling illegal drugs, particularly in the restaurant and bar district of Coral Bay and Cruz Bay. Call Crime Stoppers if you have any information about maybe cars that they drive, license plate numbers, make, model, aliases they may use, employment information, anything you may know. Please help make St. John a safer place to live. And on St. Thomas, there have been a number of strong arm robberies, particularly of females and the elderly. Police believe that the robberies that are occurring in the areas of Sugar Estate, Barbell Plaza, and Polyburg are all being done by the same people. Please help law enforcement identify these robbers by calling Crime Stoppers and letting us know what you know. If you see any suspicious activity, call 911 and report it right away. You can report information about these or any other crimes on our website, www.crimestoppersusvi.org. Or you can always call 1-800-222-TIPS, which is 8477. Your tips are always completely anonymous. And if your information leads to an arrest, recovery of stolen property, weapons, illegal drugs, you will receive a cash reward. Our stateside operators speak several languages. Crime Stoppers would like to thank you, the community, for your assistance in helping to make the territory a sacred place to live, to work, and to raise a family. Don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook. Look up Crime Stoppers USBI. This has been Judy Fricks with your weekly Crime Stoppers report. Thanks, Judy Fricks. When we come back from this break, honoring an empress. Stay with us. <laughs> 